part 31, I had a question coming out of section 6.6, .6, number 45, and here we had a logarithmic equation to solve. So I want to write that down, that we had a logarithmic equation. And I say that because quite literally, we have an equal sign, which makes it an equation, and we have some logs. All right, so it's a logarithmic equation, and the other thing to take note of here is that there are logs on both sides of the equation. So logs on both sides of the equation. And when there's logs on both sides, what you want to do is you want to get the left side into one logarithmic term and the right side into, ooh, what is that? <laughs> the right side into one logarithmic term. Now the right side's ready to go, so that's awesome. But the left side has two logs. So we need to just combine those using properties of logarithms. And when you have two logarithms that are added together, I can collapse them into one logarithm where the argument is the product. So you see me doing the product of x to x minus 3, which I have to distribute a bit, and that's where I get that this is ln of x squared minus 3x. Okay, so with that, the idea here is if you have an equal sign, you have an equation, right, and you have two logs, you have an ln on the left and an ln on the right. So if you have two logarithms that are equal to each other, and the base of that logarithm is the same, and they both are base e, right, that's what natural log is, base e. So if the bases are the same, then the arguments have to be the same. So I just have to set the arguments equal to each other. And now it's a different ballgame because I'm looking at a quadratic equation. Now again, when you get it down to it's a quadratic equation, right? you could factor, you could use a quadratic formula, or you could complete the square. Now I'm going to opt to factor because it, it, it is nice and factorable. I set the equation to zero by subtracting the 7x. I factor out that GCF of x and I'm getting my two values of x. x is 10 or zero. And that's all fine and good but with these logs because they do have a domain issue you always want to take your answers and just make sure that none of your arguments zero out or become negative because that's a domain violation. So let me try, I'll start with x equaling 10. If I started with 10, this argument is 10, that's good. If I have a 10 here, this argument becomes seven and let me start writing this, right? Okay, and then if I have a 10 here, this would be 70. And all three of those arguments are greater than zero, so this is gonna work. And now let me erase that and let's plug in x equaling zero. All right, if I plug in x equaling 0, this argument turns into 0, this becomes negative 3, and this is 0. None of those are good. And it only takes 1 to be bad, and, and then you would throw out the answer. So x equals 0 does not make it in to my, my a set of um, solutions. So my only answer that I get from this is x equaling 10. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Bye.